Hey everybody, welcome to Improv FAQ. I'm James Quesada, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about vulnerability in improv. We'll talk about what it means to be vulnerable, why it's important, and how you can play more from a place of vulnerability. We could talk about vulnerability in a couple of ways. We could talk about being vulnerable as a player, as a person, the actual you who is improvising, and we could talk about vulnerability in terms of our characters and the acting that goes into playing vulnerable characters. As a player, vulnerability has to do with taking risks, a willingness to fail, reducing your ego, and trusting the people that you're playing with. I hope to cover all of those topics in future episodes, and I will say there's definitely overlap between our capacity to be vulnerable as a person and our ability to play vulnerable characters. But for this episode, we're going to focus on what vulnerability means for our characters. Vulnerability for your character means having your character care about things and express that they care. Expressing tender feelings is a vulnerable thing for a character to do. If your best friend forgot your birthday and your character says, meh, birthdays are stupid, you're not being vulnerable because you don't care. But if your character says, yeah, so did everyone else, then you're having a vulnerable moment because your feelings are hurt. Or if you say, oh, that's so sweet, but please don't feel bad. You're there for me 24 seven. That's worth a thousand birthdays. Then you're being vulnerable in that case too, because you care about your friend and you don't want them to feel guilty. Vulnerability may also mean having a character with flaws and revealing those flaws. Flaws make a, a character vulnerable to ridicule and criticism. And maybe your character is a really great boss, but they're also really vain. You might think to add that dimension to your own character, or maybe your scene partner calls it out about your character. Either way, the more that you express that flawed behavior along with the good qualities of your character, the more vulnerable that character is. And even when it comes to character flaws, it's still about caring. In order to be vulnerable, your character needs to care about their flaws and be unable to help themselves regardless. The boss character may deny the accusation of being vain, but they should still care if the team thinks of them that way. And as a player, it's your job to keep acting vain despite denying it. In fact, the more status that a character has, the more important it is to play their flaws and to play those flaws as unconscious habits out of the character's control. That way, the flaws are embarrassing and there's comedy in that. Again, especially for high status characters. As Krusty the Clown would say, Free comedy tip, Slick. The pie gag's only funny when the saps got dignity. Like that guy. Hey, hell, pie job for Lord Autumn Bottom there. Oh dear. <laughs> The more dignity the character has, the more you should hit them with pie. Which brings us to our next question. Why is character vulnerability important in improv? Because vulnerability makes great comedy. Perfect characters and perfect people are annoying, and characters who don't care are boring. In improv, having vulnerabilities gives us something to play with. As characters, we can push each other's buttons, get under each other's skin, entice each other, and just get each other to react. Vulnerability also makes things three-dimensional. Having flaws and caring about things is what makes characters relatable. It humanizes them. It allows people to see themselves and people they know in the characters on stage. And the recognition of something familiar and human plays a major role in what makes us laugh. Now, it can be funny to not care. Maybe it's a game of, I don't care about the things that I should care about, and I care a whole lot about things that don't really matter. In that case, your character still cares. They just care about things that flip our expectations. But it's kind of a one-note game of, I don't give a crap about anything, which plays the same really no matter what, it, it just feels one dimensional. And you're likely to get tired of playing that game if, if the audience and your team and your scene partners don't get tired of it first. And the same thing with flaws. Playing a character who is flawed but doesn't care might have it, its place too. 
An unapologetically flawed character might be a great antagonist or villain, depending on how evil you are. Obviously, those things are useful if you're playing narrative or a show with a story arc. It might also be useful in standalone scene work, uh, just to contrast against the more relatable characters in the scene. But in these cases, you have to ask yourself, if you're choosing to play the character that way to benefit the scene or the story, or if you're playing that way out of habit because it feels safer for you as a player and a person, maybe as a way to protect your ego or to avoid tapping into those emotions for the exact reason that they're so powerful in a show, because they make us vulnerable. So how can you get better at playing from a place of vulnerability? This can be challenging for a number of reasons. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, our capacity to be vulnerable as a person and our ability to play vulnerable characters can be wrapped up in each other. So getting better at vulnerable character work might mean working on your relationship with your own emotions. And that will obviously mean different things to different people. Speaking for myself, I experience emotions and express emotions in pretty subtle and controlled ways so that on the inside, I might be exper experiencing a, an emotion at like an eight or a nine or even a 10, but on the outside, I'm like, oh. And, you know, so for me, I have to work on dialing up the way that my characters express emotion because it's just different than how I really do. And, and so learning to tap into that and harness it and uh, be more expressive about it is something that I have to learn and, and look for opportunities to really let my characters come apart and give up control. And your experience and journey with tapping into your own emotions is gonna look different from person to person. It's gonna be unique to you. That being said, these are some things you can aim at if vulnerability in your character work is the goal. Lead with emotion. You don't need to spend a ton of mental space deciding on the source of your character's vulnerability. If you come into the scene with an emotional choice, you're already setting yourself up for a character with vulnerabilities who is three-dimensional and relatable. And it'll be easier to figure out why your character feels the way they do because you're already doing it. Keep the emotions positive and play them realistically. Often the most positive feelings are the hardest to play sincerely. Or again, maybe that's just me speaking for myself. But playing characters who are hopeful and loving and grateful can be the most fun if played in earnest. If you play emotions too broad, it can feel either sarcastic or hollow. And while it's good to play realistic emotion, it's also important to remember that improv is generally geared toward comedy and playfulness. Playing realistic anger or sadness or fear can be more concerning than entertaining uh, if you go too much to an extreme with uh, really just trying to be realistic about those uh, emotions. And in improv, positive, optimistic emotions tend to get laughs from an audience. Maybe it's because there's just so much negativity in the world to begin with that when we see characters who are positive, it's just surprising and delightful. If you're playing a high status character, give them a flaw. I feel like high status is a pretty common safety zone for people who struggle with vulnerability. And if that's you, make your high status characters clumsy or forgetful or gullible or easily frustrated. Play into that flaw and make it look like the character is doing it unconsciously, even though you as a player are doing it on purpose. And make sure that that character cares about what other people think about them and their flaws. That's it for this episode. I hope that you found it helpful. And if you did, hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe and also hit that bell for notifications on when we release new episodes. And you can also leave a comment on this video if you have follow-up questions about vulnerability or if you wanna suggest topics and questions for other episodes of Improv FAQ.